everybody, and welcome to the Tea with Crema. My name is Chris. I'll be one of your hosts today, and I'm joined by my best friend, Emma. What's up, y'all? Our episode today is low-key a topic that, like, probably should have been earlier in the season, just based on, like, the theme that we had for several of our rapid fire questions for quite some time. And so we'll be talking about the show Naked and Afraid and survival situations because I don't know what that has to do with like self care, but Emma and I spend a very large amount of time figuring out how well we would do in a survival type situation. So sometimes apocalypse style, sometimes deserted island. And so (laughs) talking about the show that kind of inspires some of those conversations today, a big part of how we spend some of our free time. So finally diving into Naked and Afraid, just some of our experiences, our inspirations, what we've learned about ourselves and others, thoughts, opinions, just random things about a show that like, Some people have probably heard of, you've probably seen an episode or two in passing. It's been around for 16 seasons, so quite a few years, but like... a lot. Yeah, I've recently started just watching all of them. It's kind of, it's fine. It's great. I really enjoy the show. But (laughs) before we begin, Emma, what tea did you bring today? Today, I just brought a regular, regular green tea. I need a little bit of a caffeine boost. If you listened to our last episode, you know I'm training for a marathon. So after we're done recording, my husband and I are going to go for a run. So I need a little bit of energy, though. What are you drinking today? Today, I have a butterscotch pie tea from Nelson's Tea. And it describes itself as... <clears throat> Just like Granny's old recipe, this brew is sweet, smooth, and silky. Caution may be addictive. Oh. You know, one of those like high bar setting descriptions. The ingredients <laughs> were kind of all over the place. Like I really am unsure what's happening here because it's saying it's a green rooibos, organic honey bush tea, peanuts are in this tea, butterscotch chips are in this tea marigold and natural flavoring so i'm like um it's like one of those like baked good type teas and you know sometimes they sell themselves high and then deliver (laughs) kind of low i feel like that was a lot of words that not necessarily go together like i feel like they were just words (laughs) was it good yeah it's okay i don't really know I don't know. It was one of those things like, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, this tea, like green tea, I'll just put honey in it. Or like I can Mm -hmm. put some lemon in it. Like you can dress it up a little bit to like do something. This one I was like, do I put milk? Do I put honey? Like what even flavors do I use to kind of like complement the tea? Like at a base level, it's fine. But like, I don't know if I would like go out of my way. I don't know if I call it (laughs) addictive, like granny's pie, but it's not bad. So... Are we ready to jump into this and our favorite slash, I don't know, again, like it has to do with our apocalyptic obsession (laughs) slash survival. I think it's like a generational thing. Like we just, a lot of the books that we read, when I think about it, like a lot of books that we read growing up were very like dystopian, very post-apocalyptic, a lot of movies, zombie apocalypse type movies. And again, I don't know, maybe movies have always been like this, but I just feel like in the past like 10, 15 or so years, like since my like teen years up until this point, it's been a lot of like apocalypse centric media. Right. And so that's why I'm kind of like, how long would I survive? That's the thing though. You know, like I watch these shows. So specifically, right. We're talking about naked and afraid. And if you're from the U S you know, that discovery channel will do like just marathons of naked and afraid on like Saturdays and Sundays. There's been many a weekend where my mom and I will just put on naked and afraid and just watch it. And just like, We'll do we'll be doing other things in the background, but like we'll just like watch it continuously for like 12, 13 hours of just naked and afraid. And I think it's because every episode is different, or like not different, but like it's a different set of people every time. Most times, right? Like there's very rarely a two-parter or more than that. But yeah, like I could just like sit there and I could watch it. And I like I would like to say that most time I'm like pretty on the nose of like, okay, are they gonna make it or are they not gonna make it? But a lot of times it's the ones you think that aren't gonna make it that end up having such strong like willpower and like mental capacity that they end up making it very far. So 
If you're unfamiliar with Naked and Afraid, at the beginning of every show, while they're doing their introductions of the people who are about to be introduced to each other, they have something called a PSR system, which is a primitive survival rating. So this is based on a bunch of different things. It's based on your like psychological well-being and like mental preparedness. It's based on like your own like basic bushcraft and survival instincts and it's based on your athleticism. So there's like a whole bunch of different things that go into making this rating. So let's start there. What would be your PSR, Chris? Well, on a scale of zero to 10, with zero being immediate death (laughs) and 10 being can survive anywhere in any situation, I would say I would give myself like a solid like two or three, mostly because like I really feel like I have the mental fortitude and tenacity to do something for a really long time. But like don't have any actual practical skills. Right. So could only survive so long as the other person, like if they told me what to do, I got you. Like go cut down that tree. I'll figure it out. You know, (laughs) I am a team player, but like, what am I bringing to the equation? Like a can do attitude, (laughs) which honestly, I'm not even sure like how long that's going to last. Cause you know, you get hangry on the show. So (laughs) I would have to give myself like a solid like two or three because I would try my best. Right. Yes. I think I would say the same thing for myself. Like I would give myself like a three or f- I would even go up to say like even a four. But again, like I'm just there for the vibes. Like Chris and I could not be put in together because then we would immediately die. I think he and I bring the same amount of skill set and would be great partners to someone else. <laughs> Honestly. The two of us would like make it in the limit of how long it takes for people to tap out when they don't have water because (laughs) that would probably be it. I feel like that's the thing though, like the water thing, like I've done enough filtration labs now by this point and like taught it enough that I feel like I could get through a filtration. Now, when they're asking me to like take down that chicken though, I don't know if I'm on the hunt. I don't think either of us are bringing any hunting skills. (laughs) Like we're going to be even a little fully, bit fully fully foraging. <laughs> I think <laughs> full foragers because like I think we both bring like the intellectual part <laughs> to the show. So like in it's theory, the smarts. <laughs> <laughs> the application of things. If you're like, here's a bow and arrow, go hunt a pig. I'd be like, how? Where? What do you want me to do? Like Is I my can't. Name Katniss, no. <laughs> It is not. I can't set up tree, the tree traps or the pitfall. Like I'm not setting, I can't set up a trap. I don't fish. So like the actual like collection of food outside of like, oh my God, I found a berry bush is not, it's not there. It is not there. And then like these people like know like things of like this tree has sap that's really good at catching on fire. So we'll use this to make our fire. And I'm like, look, that's a tree. Maybe fire. Possibly fire? Oh, poisonous fire? I know that you need dry leaves to make fire. That's... But when I first started watching Naked and the Freight, naked and afraid i would like do like deep dives like i would fall into like the rabbit hole of like what does it take to be on this show and i remember there was a woman who vlogged about her experience so she said that before they get taken out to their environment they have like a boot camp like it's like a three or four day boot camp of where they're taught like these are the plants you can eat these are the plants you shouldn't eat like these are the types of animals that you might encounter um this is how you combat oh, that so they get okay them. so they get some like situational awareness at least right which also like, kind of makes sense because like you don't want these people to go out there and die like literally right. immediately like that's like bad tv right <laughs> you want them to be on the verge of death but like actual death causes like you know lost legal and monetary issues exactly (laughs) so yeah so like she was saying how i think where she ended up getting dropped off was somewhere in the african continent and she was not from you know a savanna slash grassland biome so she had to kind of learn that so like you can be an outdoorsy person right but like if you're not used to a non a deciduous forest and you're from a deciduous forest environment and now you're being thrown into the savannah obviously you're gonna need some kind of skill so yeah so she was saying how before they dropped them off oh they also made sure that they had all of their vaccinations and like there's certain like medical things so then that's when they start doing the psrs because they make them go and see a psychologist but what i was really interested in it is because she then starts blogging about the after effects of like when she came home she was 
low-key traumatized from it. Like, just she hadn't realized of, like, what that does to your brain chemistry of, like, she had lived in a scarcity mindset and, like, was in a definite, like, caloric deficit. And then when she came out, like, she was, like, gorging herself on food because her brain was still set of, like, when are, when are you going to get your next meal? When are you going to see this again? So she kind of talks about how that really, like, altered her. And, like, you know, if you are someone with disordered eating backgrounds, like, this is not the show for you because you're going to come home and it's just going to mess up your brain so badly that, like, yeah, you you essentially have PTSD from the show. And then she talked about how – I think she actually didn't make it the full 21 days. She ended up getting some kind of infection from a bug bite that she had to be escorted out. And I think she she made it like 14 days though which i was like you know 14 is a lot longer than i think i would make it so props to her i think i could definitely do because sometimes they do the fan episodes right and they don't do the full 21 i think they just do 14 days mm. and so i was like okay i could i would definitely be like a fun fan episode kind of person because they get the survival skills boot camp yeah whereas i think these individuals who are theoretically coming with survival skills are just getting a like lay of the land type boot camp right like you're about to get dropped off into this place please avoid this snake kind of thing or like because i will say that like i have noticed now that you're saying it it makes sense because like they'll get dropped off in these locations and be like talking about certain like flora and fauna and i'm like but like how did you actually know that (laughs) because like that's not a fact that I would just know outside of watching right. this show specifically. Like, why do you know about that? There's that snake in Central America that they mentioned, like, at least once a season. Because <laughs> the producer got bit by it that one time and was oh, hospitalized. And then, like, no. they were like, okay, well, we have to be very cautious of the snake because, like, it will try to kill you. Because it did try to take one of the producers of the show out. And that's the thing, too, right? It's like, it's not just you being naked and afraid. There's people out there. Like, the producer There's a camera crew. <laughs> They're also out there struggling too. They're not naked or afraid, but they're probably afraid. Because <laughs> I watched like the behind the scenes stuff. There, there was a time because they go out before the people do to kind of like just check like the base suitability of these locations apparently, and like you know, can they actually record? Can people even like find the basic things out there? Because again, it's not good TV to like put people in a like desert for 21 days because like in actually dangerous situations or like unrealistic in terms of survival like there's literally nothing in the middle of the Sahara desert you right. would not survive like you just couldn't but there was that time that you know the producer got bit by the snake there was the time that they got attacked by the killer bees or the honey bee like some right. really aggressive bees and like the whole crew <laughs> got taken out and so <laughs> i will say that like it's it was interesting watching that perspective as well because, yes, you're not, like, completely out there alone. Like, there is the cast and crew that don't really intervene. But watching, like, to just know that, like, nature does not care about any person that's out there. Like, it's not just because you're naked and afraid that, like, nature's targeting you. Mm-mm. Nature will handle anybody out there. Right. It's, like, and it kind of, it's kind of poetic a little bit, right? It's just, like, the natural ecosystem. Like, the earth, it gives and it takes away. And it does not discriminate about whether or not you've had years and decades of experience versus if you are somebody that's just a fan of the show. <laughs> Because at this point, I've seen people with experience get taken out day one. Right. That's the one I... Okay. Low key, it kind of like... It's a little bit satisfying when you have those that are like super cocky and like, oh, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And then they're out in the third day. <laughs> Just like, oof. Where did they all put you in this environment about? and you were not ready. Right. And it's usually... Not always, but it's in the eight the seasons man. that I've seen. It's almost always the man who shows up and it's just like, I got this. I'm going to be the provider. I got all these skills. I know what I'm doing. And then gets out there and cannot start a fire. And it's always the fire. They can't start that fire. And like their whole ego deflates instantly. And they're like, I can't do anything. And they just sit in their shelter for the next like week. And then the woman finally figures out the fire. And then they're like, some men are like, okay fine, whatever, we'll survive. And then some men are like, just useless for the remainder of the period. Like, and she's like, this is wild to me. One of my favorite episodes, and I like could not give you a season or even an episode. It's just from my memory because again, Discovery shows it at random, I think. One of my favorite episodes was, yeah, there was this man who was like so macho, so all this, all that. 
I think he came in with like a nine or no, maybe not a nine. Cause that's really high. Maybe an eight, like a high eight. And his partner came in with like a high three. And by the end of it, because he just like could not get over this like mental block, like could not get over being hungry, could not get over being, you know, cold. Hayes ended up dropping, I think, to almost like a five or a six. And she ended up increasing to a five or a six, just like based on like her own like mental fortitude and was like, and he even says at the end, he was like, yeah, I was not mentally prepared for this. Like I would not have survived without her. And she was like, you know, like someone like we both couldn't be negative. Someone had to be here for morale and they're like you weren't doing it so like thank you for helping us survive like physically and like with the logistics but like yeah you're not a great person to be around in so that attitude was like a real game changer it really is like also like the chemistry of the couples right it's really impactful in the dynamic because there are definitely been people who there was one lady who was evacuated because she threatened to kill the guy that she was with <laughs> <laughs> and I don't I wouldn't say it was one of those moments where like it wasn't necessarily like she meant to say that but like she definitely was like man I could kill you right now and it was just like okay and the producers came in and they were like ma'am we're gonna have to take you out of the show because we can't you can't threaten to kill people on the show on national television like there are certain things you just can't do like they had just irritated each other to the point where she was like i could kill you and everyone was like there's a machete in this episode so like (laughs) and that's a wrap Mm -mm. and you're naked and there's a machete and there are some very valuable body parts that just may or may not exist anymore if you keep them together they had to take her out they took her out it was like the it was sad but like you know, it was one of those hindsight of just like, lols, why would you say that? <laughs> That's really... But like, also, maybe there was like an element of truth to it as well. So, you know, we've kind of talked about, you know, these types of PSRs, like the mental attitude, you know, men having their egos, not always men, but most times, you know, being men. So what is your one survival item? So again, for those of you who are new to the Naked and Afraid lore, you get one item when you come in and the producers started giving you they started giving an item too so essentially couples were coming in with like three items oh okay well that's nice yeah because i remember in those first seasons it was like literally your item and your partner's item and so if you both brought fire starter sorry i don't you guys are gonna have to fashion a pot now then so they don't let people bring the same item okay i don't know how they make sure that that doesn't happen they never really talk about it but like they don't let people bring the same item People have brought, like, personal items. So, like, people have brought, like, knives that they've made themselves. One lady brought a magnifying glass from her grandfather. So people bring, like, different items. It was really fun. People bring duct tape and people, the other partners, for anyone who brings duct tape, is always like, are you serious? The most common items are pots, fire starters, and knives. I would say, like, those are, like, the three very much constantly in rotation. Usually the producer's starting i can't remember what season but they start giving an item and usually like if someone doesn't bring a fire starter like that's kind of their default item or it's like oh or it's the pot or it's the knife if the other people have not brought it so i think there's like a certain level of like you have three items and it's usually a knife and a fire starter sometimes a pot sometimes not a pot what would you bring i would have to probably like it would probably have to be the fire starter because i have seen people start fires the other ways and i just am not sure i know the practicality of it also i am not sure i could do a bow drill it just does not look like a fun experience i've seen people do bow drills on that show for like three days straight and not get a fire right i think when you see the bow drill episodes versus like the fire starter episodes you're like yeah why wouldn't you bring a fire starter but there was an episode that i had seen where a girl brought a fire starter but didn't know how to use it and then when the guy was asking her about the fire starter, she was like, I just bought it. And he was like, so you brought this thing that you've never used before into the show and you're saying you can start the fire. Like he was kind of being a, you know, like an a-hole about it. But at the like, I saw his like rationale behind it. Like logically, he's like, why would you, you've been practicing on something different and then now you're bringing in this brand new thing. And she's like, well, I just didn't want the other one to like break. And he's like, but like the fact that you didn't practice... <laughs> It's also wild. But also right. people have broken fire starters on the show, which right. makes me also confused. And like, can I just be like a box of matches? Because like, I don't know if I know how to work a fire starter either. 
it's very confusing. Also, yeah, people have definitely, I feel like Loki lied about their experiences somehow and like made it onto the show. At least, oh, and I've seen at least more? like one or two episodes where I'm like, mm, I don't know if you were actually like qualified to be on this show. Like, I don't know if you're actually more of a hindrance to your partner and like a little no liability at this point. Like, right. mm, I'm not sure you actually should have been on the show. Like, I don't, I don't think you have any base skills. So I, there's definitely moments where I've seen that's just like, Ugh, no. So you've seen eight seasons so far. You yourself, and then maybe even like, which ones do you prefer watching? So I guess let's start with you yourself. Which one would you rather be thrown into, water or land? Like which environment? Land. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, the biggest thing with the water ones are the mosquitoes. Oh, I was going to say it's, and this sounds really dumb now that I'm saying it out loud, like it's the moisture, like staying wet for that long is so dangerous. And it's usually rainy in those places and it's right. cold at night right. and there's a lot of other logistical problems for sure. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, swamp based kind of things or like. Oh, the swamp would be the literal worst. <laughs> certain rainforest ones. I'm like, that environment was the worst. Like. There were certain environments that I was like, I don't know if it was like this particular, like there are some environments that I'm like, no, actually like send some of the like higher rated individuals there. Cause I'm actually curious if like anyone Anyone. would make it there because it seemed nightmarish. Have you seen the, the island hopping one? Were they to go from island to island? No. Yes. Oh, that, that sounds one terrible. was no. That one was like honestly, it sticks out in my mind too. When I think of water, like when you were like, oh yeah, rainforest and swamp. I wasn't even thinking of that. I was thinking of the one where they had to go island to island, and so they were dropped off in one island and had to at the end of their twenty-one days, their meeting point was another island that was clear across, like kilometers away. And I was, I was like watching it, and so they're exposed in salt water for a good 12 hours of the day and like you know like okay i love the beach too but it's so dangerous out there the salt water is just like you're just exposed to the elements yeah so they ended up having to island hop throughout their way over and it was it was probably like top five one of the worst conditions that i've ever seen before like that was one and then there's also another one where i forgot where they got dropped off but the entire like ground and like ground level and ground terrain i guess type was thorns it was just thorny <laughs> so like immediately they had Couldn't to fashion anywhere sho- right like it had to fashion shoes there's one environment they could not get water from like what do you do those ones were the ones like this man had like literally dug a human-sized hole and even by doing that was only able to generate enough water to last them a few days like when they ran out of water there like they tapped because there was no other water to be found on that island they didn't have a pot and i'm just like there are definitely some environments that like that one little thing is gone and like it's a game changer you're out right because that water is probably like the biggest not being able to get fresh water i know at a big survival level takes you out right if you don't have water again in three days you're done and then i know i've also seen people <laughs> the worst but like it's funny but it's not funny it's like when people get like sunburned out of the competition <laughs> Right. And they don't usually like quit, but it's like, also some people look awful. Like those sunburns sometimes look absolutely terrible, especially on like the tropical island locations. And then I, one of my favorite things about the show is when they do the before and after. And then when they do like the, they lost 15% body fat. I mean, obviously not 15%, but you know, like they lost this much. And then you just see like, just see the physical effects that three weeks and no normal like food intake and like vitamin deficiencies. And, oh, and then I feel like the woman had talked about her teeth. Her teeth ended up rotting. Like something had happened to her teeth within that like three weeks that she ended up getting like, ugh, like abscesses and stuff. See, that's the, the people that leave the show with like the long-term health effects are the ones that I'm like, okay, like is the experience like really worth it though? Because right. I am not trying to leave with like, some people have left with like some diseases. Um, One man like broke his knee. It, you know, so there is a, like there's a certain level of risk when you're out there that you have to take. And I'm like, oh boy. And there's no money involved, which is the one that they get 100000 That was the competition, Naked and Afraid, Last Man Standing. They've only had one of those seasons. And that was like a the same general premise, but like very different in execution. 
But that's the only one that I've seen that has any money involved. So literally people are just out here for funsies, I swear. Right. No, I think that's what it is. It's for the glory, right? It's for the fun fact at the party. Like, yeah, I was on Naked and Afraid. Okay, yeah. And now you've shaved off 20 years of your life because you caught a disease in the waterborne areas that, you know, what have been eradicated. Right. Ugh, I don't know. So what are what are some of your favorite, like episodes that you can think of i would say one of the ones that i recently saw was like in season seven towards the end Mm -hmm. there was one pairing that they really struggled in the beginning because a lot of the people come from like military backgrounds i've noticed like a lot of military background individuals and so like the guy on this one was the one who come who came from the military background and like you know really entered it thinking like hot stuff like i got it I'm going to figure it out. It's going to be great. (laughs) But the girl ended up carrying the team through the challenge. But the thing that I really liked about this particular episode is that usually when that happens, again, the guy just kind of like sulks his way through the rest of this episode or like the experience. Mm. But in this particular case, like the guy like really, I don't know. He just had like this like miraculous turning point where he just like realized like I am actually making this situation much worse. I'm not helping. I'm not contributing. I am just being very negative. And I got to humble myself in this moment. And she's at this time, like, she's doing a lot of the things to help us survive. And so like, at this point, I kind of have to like, default to learning from her, Uh as opposed to taking on this like, big provider role that I thought I was going to have. And I would say like, overall, that seemed like one of the closest set of people. Like, they seemed like they got really, really close together. There was one episode that I saw that was, like, out in Europe. They seemed like they got really close, too. But the lady didn't make it because she spilled boiling water on her. And oh no. had to be medically evacuated for burns. But that one, like, I don't know. That one, like, tugged on my heartstrings because of why the guy was on there. And, like, right. they were really bonding and, like, experiencing yeah. some things. Also, that was, like, almost the only episode that I've seen that took place in Europe, which was odd. It's also very funny. I guess like preconceived notions. So anytime they're like in the States, I'm like, we have wild places out here. We definitely do. They're almost all in the South, but we definitely have some like still wild places. Louisiana, Alabama, Texas has been on there at least twice from what I've seen. Dark, murky water to me is, yeah, that's a no. Like there are so many, oh, I don't know. I don't know. But I think a lot of them do end up going on to like, this is kind of like spring- for a lot of those that are like survivalists, it kind of like springboards. They're like either their YouTube channels or they're like influencer. Like, so I think that in itself too kind of gives them some street cred or like some credibility. And I will say there are some people that I did watch uh, Naked and Afraid Last One Standing, which was I think one of the more recent competition based ones, which really pulled some of the more popular and successful survivors from multiple seasons. And there are some people that have been on several episodes and seasons right, across right. And Naked and Afraid like favorites, history. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, and then, or like not favorites. There's definitely a guy who's like, he's been on there so many times, but like, oh, I feel like no I know one really likes him. Jeff, I think his name is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No one likes Jeff, apparently. He's kind of arrogant. That's why. But he's like been pretty successful overall. He didn't win the competition. Spoiler alert. My bad, y'all. I don't know if you're going to watch it, but like, <laughs> he did not win. But that particular season, I was like, this is weird. And I don't think I like it compared to the regular season. So for the most part, I've only seen seven and a half seasons of the regular Naked and Afraid. I've watched one Naked and Afraid XL, which is where they put like 10-ish people in together. And I only watched that season because it was a continuation from one of the season seven, the season seven episode that I really liked. They like ran into the XL team. And we're given the like, option like to like ran into or like ran into. I really think it was like the quote unquote run into, but they presented it as like random. And I was like, oh, oh my okay, gosh. you just put all 12 of these people in the same environment and like, right. oh, okay. And you're like, this seems like it was a convenience. <laughs> it did work out because the on the XL challenge, these are individuals who have been on the show before. Uh, and see. so what ended up happening was once you finish the couple that I enjoyed, finish their 21 days as they were moving to their extraction point, ran into the XL group and then were given the option to stay for the XL challenge, which is 40 days. 
or continue to extraction. And the girl was like, I have done what I said I was going to do. And she left. (laughs) And the guy was like, okay, I'll take her to extraction. Then I'm going to come back. And so he stayed for the 40 days. So interesting. Which also, that Excel season, I don't know what the other ones are like, but when I tell you people were dropping like flies, it was wild. Like, I think to make it to 21 days is already super impressive. But to make it a month and some change... Wow. I don't know. That's a lot. That season definitely had one of those ones that was like, he, I guess, had finished his season. So he thought he could talk hot mess about people that did not finish their 21 days, got on the show, and did not finish his 40. That's the one that'll get you. It was fun watching that reunion show because one of the girls was like, so you were mad at me because you were calling me a tapper and a quitter and all this other stuff. Because she had been on two seasons, two regular seasons, and didn't make it through either one. She got medically evacuated for one of them. And then decided to go on the 40? And then decided to go on the 40 because she was like, I'm going to make it through one of these challenges. Which at least if like, yeah, so she tapped out twice, right? So if she made she it. She tapped once one- and was medically tapped once. Oh, I mean, but like if she, if she made it the 40 days, then is that not just equivalent to the two challenges that she already, you know? Basically. But it was just really funny because, again, he was giving her hotness the whole time about, like, you're a tapper. I don't think you're going to make it. Da, 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 da. And then she made it. He did it. And so during the reunion, that was definitely one of those things where it was just kind of like, hmm. So what are your thoughts on it now? Because right. you were saying that people who tap are lame and da, 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 and all this other stuff. And then you quit. And he was just like, well, um, uh, mm, you know, the usual. <laughs> so it was very interesting. Overall, I... Enjoy the show. I don't know why. I really can't tell you why. (laughs) I just really do. There's just something about it. I think it's in the same way that you really like those um, Godzilla movies. There's something... (laughs) I just do. There's just something about chaos that I think just itches your brain a little bit. (laughs) But yeah, I agree. I don't know what it is. But there is something just highly entertaining about putting not even regular regular people, but people who you would normally see and like would say are very outdoorsy and putting them into very extreme circumstances. And seeing how they do. And it's like, and they're not, you know, the thing is, is that there's no harm in it. I mean, yes, there is a little bit of harm, but like they're putting themselves in those situations, right? It's not like high stakes in the way that we're forcing anyone to be on it. Like people are- You very much have your own option to be on it or not be on it. There's no money involved. Like no one's like forcing themselves through it for money kind of thing, which- I know it was like part of the squid game issue for the uh, real life squid games that they just had, but people on naked and afraid are a hundred percent volunteering to be there. Right. So like when they make it, it is because they made it or if they don't make it, it is because they did not make it. There's no like money stakes involved. Like some people are like, I miss my family. I gotta go. Have you seen that one episode where the guy, was he, I can't remember one of the partners ended up tapping within like the first three days. Mm-hmm. And, then and then they, they brought in another break, person. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. There was, so they did do that. And the guy stayed those extra three days with the girl. They struggled through a little bit too, but they did make it the second round. And then there was also one that was really funny because one of the people was getting to the drop off point and like quit before they even made it to drop off, like arrived in the environment. And I guess saw the environment was like, you know, what? actually (laughs) I'm good. Take me out. And so then they had to find another person to do the show with that. Which makes me think, like, I wonder if they bring out, like, you know, multiple people and, like, just, like, have an understanding that, okay, like, if we're bringing out five of these people, like, two of, only two of them are going to get an episode, you know, or something like that. Like, they have to have some kind of contingency plan. It's not like they're just calling them up on the phone and be like, hey, by the way, you're coming out. It makes me wonder. And I'm like, I don't know, do they? Or were they prepping for a different look? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I know that like, it's so funny because when you Google like naked and afraid, like behind the scenes or like fun facts about naked and afraid, the one, num- the number one thing that pops up is like naked and afraid is fake or like, and I think like to a level there is probably some, you know, like TV magic. We see a lot. We don't see a lot, right? This is like a whole 21 days condensed into a 45 minute show. But I feel like the overall, or maybe that's just me who wants to believe that like the overall messaging is that most of it is real. I could see why people think that because there are definitely some moments where I'm like, oh, y'all just like conveniently found this protein source source on day 21, like right before or on day 18, right before extraction. How interesting. Y'all didn't have no food from day seven. Right. Y'all have not. To day 20. And then found it just before (laughs) extraction. How intriguing. How did that happen? Like I've had some like questions about how much was like a little bit of tv magic to like Mm -hmm. 
kind of make sure people actually get through the 21. But like also in the same vein of like, it also wouldn't be as good of a show if people never made it. Right. You you need to have that like sense of like, okay, if I were to go on this, like I could make it. Like if you have such a low success rate, people are not going to do it. Am I here to like question the absolute validity of this show? No. I'm going to keep watching it because it's fun. Top tier entertainment. I think that's what we're at is that it is entertaining for us. Mm-hmm. Definitely one of those things like you and your mom did. Just like put it on and like clean the house kind of thing. Like it just, right. it's good. It's good you catch show. the details. It's it's easy. So overall, do you have a rating for the show? Yeah, I would say it's like a good, like I would give it 4.55. Like there's nothing that like I as a person could never ever do this. So I think it's very entertaining for me to watch. Yeah, like I have no qualms about it. What about you? I would also have to give it four to five, five stars. Like it's just something, it's consi- It's very consistent. You know what you're going to get. It's going to be a man. It's going to be a woman. They have 21 days. They got three items. The environment's different, but for the most part, like it's the same kind of general process. I just like it. And sometimes some off the wall stuff happens that like really sticks in your mind. And you're just like, you would not believe what I just saw on <laughs> Naked and Afraid. Right. Would I survive? Absolutely not. But <laughs> I, like I know that about myself. About right. And I, I like do it, entertain it and... the piece of it. Yeah. Okay. So now it is time for our rapid fire question. <laughs> what? Okay. I know you're okay. So we've gone to karaoke together before and you kind of sort of sang along. You were more there for the vibes. You are being held hostage. And the only way that you can be let out is if word for word you sing a song what song is like it? to get out of the out of the containment area yes like the the hostage taker will release you if you can what word for word like you get the word wrong one word wrong then you're stuck there there are a few songs that i kind of know that well um anxiety by megan the stallion i'm actually like almost have down 100 percent. no you have to get 100 percent, christopher <laughs> no nah, i feel pretty confident like Give me like a warm up round and like I'm I'm pretty sure I can nail that song <laughs> like the next time. Um, I also know part of your world very well. Yep, yep. Any version yep. at this point, just uh-huh. put one on and I got the words. Right. I key change and everything. I wish I could say like poor unfortunate souls, but honestly, like the little ad libby talky parts, yeah, I don't yeah, quite yeah. master. Uh-huh, it's not uh-huh. fair because I'm like, but I want to do my own ad libs in the middle. <laughs> So I don't, I don't, Disney movies are pretty like, they're catchy, they're simple. I could probably like make it through. Yeah. I think mine would definitely be One Two Step (laughs) by Sierra and Missy Elliott. I know that full like Missy Elliott's part down pat. You got Missy Elliott's part down. Yes. Yes, of course I do. What kind of question? Of course. Yes. So that would probably be my like number one. And then I think, yeah, also like part of your world, like Disney-esque songs. I think I could get through it. There's a couple of songs that I have like on my go-to karaoke list that I like (laughs) know-ish. So, but then there's times where I'm like at karaoke. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that that was the words. (laughs) Like when the words actually come onto the screen. But sometimes I really like... I really be looking at them and I'm like, are you sure that those are the words? Right. Okay. And then also like, to be fair, in Japan, most of the time, it's actually not the words. They're not taking it from the lyrics. So that's kind of funny. So yeah, I think definitely that would be, I'm, I'm getting out of there. You know, I'm singing Missy Elliott's part and I'm out. <laughs> okay, your turn. When, wait, I'm reading this question wrong. <laughs> what do you do when you feel the pressure of something is too much? Take a nap. <laughs> that checks out. I am a stress napper in times of like overwhelmed slash stressed. I nap like it's really bad. I've napped through most major assessments of my life. It's fine. I've woken up in time to like do things. But yeah, in the very stressful situations, I nap. What about you? Eat. I'm a stress eater. Is there a specific food that you lean on when you're stressed? It used to be fries, but I don't keep fries at specifically for that reason for that reason because i will just heat them up at any given anything even like remotely reminds me of stress and i'm like i have some fries in the refrigerator or in the freezer like just have them but yeah i know i definitely like stress eat for sure have for a while have some strategies you know sometimes you'd be overeating so have worked through it now i like drink lots of like 
water or tea or other beverages, not adult beverage, like regular beverages, just yeah. or chew a lot of gum. I love that. So that's it. Where can people find the podcast? You can find our podcast on Instagram and Facebook at The Tea with Crema. If you'd like to buy us a cup of tea, you can also Venmo us at The Tea with Crema. You can also stream all of our past episodes on all of your favorite streaming platforms. We hope to see you next time. Bye.